Uh, okay, so my name is Paul Hoffley, and in this talk, uh, I will tell you something about observability for Istio Series Mesh. Uh, so, on today's agenda, there is some generic introduction to observability. Then, I will talk about uh, telemetry subsystem in Istio, and as the last part, there will be a demo showing you soccer game deployed on Kubernetes, and we will be changing some Istio configuration uh, to change actually the behavior inside the game. And we will be monitoring the, the game by in the Kiali project, which is a series mesh observability tool, which uh, is like a standard for Istio, and also in Jaeger, so we will be looking at some distributed traces. So before we start, just a couple of words on myself. I've been working on distributed tracing and observability for about the last four years. Uh, I'm not Istio developer, however, I work on Jaeger and open tracing projects, which can be considered as a distributed tracing project which, handle, which, are, which can be used with Istio. Uh, I do also work on uh, like framework instrumentations uh, and also runtimes uh, for open tracing to make it very easy for developers to start using tracing in their technology. So when I started preparing for this presentation, I created a couple of uh, microservices. And to simply verify whether the, it works, I deployed them on Kubernetes. And to verify my deployment, I created a request to cluster, the simplest thing I can do, right? And obviously, the request failed. And well, from the error message, it's obvious that it's something wrong with the DNS. But my point here is the DNS is a distributed system. And if we want to be able to tell why the request failed, uh, we should have all the telemetry information from all of the nodes, otherwise uh, we don't know what really happened, like it's in this case. I wasn't sure whether it's my configuration issue or it's something wrong uh, with the minikube. So anyways, when speaking about uh, microservices, on this slide you can see a very large deployment of microservice application. And it's actually a screenshot from Jaeger. It shows dependency diagram. And there are maybe like 2,000 microservices. Uh, it's actually deployment from Uber, the ride-sharing uh, company. And if you are booking a ride, what happens is that request usually goes to maybe like dozens or hundreds of services. And if you are not able to, uh, to correlate what happened in those services, then you are not able to tell the story about the request, right? If uh, you are monitoring each individual service, then uh, it's fine, you, are, you know what is happening inside the service, but if you are not correlating all this data, you are basically lost, you don't know what is happening with the request. So traditionally, we used to monitor our systems by using logging and metrics, right? This is like the best base standard, and both of these monitoring techniques, they uh, work on an event-based, or they take event-based approach. So if there's an event in a system, you just generate log, or you increase a counter like metric or something like that. And if you want to use these two, you have to instrument your applications. There is no other way around, right? So for, for example, for logging, you have to use instrumentation APIs like SLA4J, Log4J, or maybe standard Java logging API. For metrics, pretty much the same story. Uh, probably your favorite uh, framework provides you some integration with metric systems. Uh, so for example, in Drop Wizard, you have Drop Wizard metrics. In uh, Spring Boot, you have something like micro Micrometer. But the problem with this is that if you look at the polyglot applications, that you potentially deal with different APIs in different languages, right? But if you look at the specific language, then there are also like different APIs and different implementation of the APIs. So you deal with different APIs, then the different instrumentations produce different set of data for the same basic same events, right? So you get inconsistent data. And the other point is that maybe some of those instrumentations, uh, they do not support or do not export the data uh, to your frame rate, uh, like monitoring platform, for example, like Prometheus or uh, Graph well, Prometheus or Splunk. So that's problem, like very inconsistent way how we monitor our applications, right? And here is where Istio can help you to worry, to unify all the data, all the telemetry data which is produced. 
So just quickly, on this slide you can see Istio architecture, and there are basically two, two important parts. The, the top, uh, uh, on the top of this slide you can see so-called data plane. It consists of your microservices, but also of all of these proxies. So the proxy is like a process which lives very close to the application. And if the application wants to, to tell something to the other application, all the traffic has to go through the proxy. Uh, so these proxies have like full control over the traffic which is going uh, between the services. The other part is a control plane, and control plane is like a brain for the service mesh. So there are three components. First one is pilot, it handles the configuration for the proxies. Then there is Citadel, which is like an authentication. And then Mixer. A mixer is uh, where all the telemetry happens. So Mixer, as I said, that all the traffic goes through the proxies, then uh, these proxies or the Mixer uh, can generate like very unified telemetry data uh, for, the, for the traffic. And what happens in, uh, in Mixer is that you can configure like what kind of telemetry you would like to extract from the traffic. So for example, like I would like to log like HTTP status code or maybe the, the payload size. Uh, the other important thing is that Mixer is pluggable, so you can actually use different monitoring solutions with it. Uh, by default, for example, there is Prometheus to, for the metrics, uh, Jaeger for the traces. But you can configure basically any of those. Uh, so the first telemetry data which uh, Mixer can produce is a matrix. Uh, as I said, by default it uses Prometheus uh, and exports the, the matrix in Prometheus format. It's a text-based format, so it's very easy to understand and read. Uh, I will not go into the details. <coughs> the next uh, telemetry information is distributed tracing. And just quickly, for the people who who don't know tracing, I would like to quickly mention how it actually works. So imagine there are five microservices, A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D, and E, and a request comes to this uh, deployment. And the first service is A. So the tracing integration generates a unique ID, which we call trace ID, and we put that ID into, the, into a bigger context. And we propagate this context to all downstream calls. It's very important that the context doesn't change. Uh, so later, after the invocation, tracing system can basically correlate all of the events with the same ID and show you something like a gun chart or like a dependency diagram would happen. So in terms of Istio, this trace ID is actually generated inside the proxy because the proxy is the first one uh, which knows about the request. And then the proxy puts those, like those, uh, identifiers from the context into the request headers and your application has to get, get them from the, from the request and propagate them and send them to the outbound request. But that can be very problematic because, uh, well, it depends on the language, right? So for example, in Java, you can store the context somewhere in thread locals and just on the client side, when you are making outbound call, just get it from the thread locals and pretty much an easy, easy thing to do. But the problem is that we write quite complicated code with a lot of concurrency, a lot of thread pools, queues, and futures, and uh, thread locals just uh, do not work with, uh, with these creatives. Uh, so, uh, so you have to be always careful about propagating uh, those headers inside your applications. <coughs> so as I mentioned, uh, the default tracing in Istio uses Jaeger, but actually Envoy and Mixer produces uh, traces in Zipkin format. Uh, it's because open tracing, well, Jaeger is like open tracing implementation, and there is no standard uh, data format with open tracing. So Envoy, I think Envoy project, they decided to use Zipkin because the, the format is well standardized. But Jaeger can uh, consume Zipkin, uh, Zipkin data, so there is no, no problem with that. So headers, uh, your application has to propagate this set of headers. It's actually called B3 protocol. It's, it comes from a Zipkin project. 
And there are also these two additional X OT span headers. I think those are from Whitestep. Uh, it's because uh, Envoy uh, initially was using Lightstep Tracer, which is like commercial vendor of tracing. Uh, so my recommendation, like this context propagation can be very tricky. And uh, my recommendation is that uh, you can actually use or, like any tracing instrumentation to propagate the context for you. So maybe you can use like something like Open Tracing Country, which uh, there are a lot of instrumentations for various frameworks. And if you plug them, use the tracer, then you can, you don't have to care uh, about <coughs> propagating those headers. The other benefit by using uh, instrumentation is that if you look at traces in Envoy, you get only visibility at the endpoints. So you see like there is an incoming request or there is a, an outgoing request. But you don't know what is happening inside your application, there is basically black box. Right? So if you use instrumentation inside the process, you get also some visibility what is happening inside. Like there is, a, uh, for example, a database call or there is a CDI invocation. It depends on you, like what kind of instrumentation you use. Uh, so just quickly about the future, um, so you can see there are a lot of headers, right? And it's like we get B3 protocol, which works for Zipkin, but we get also some like lots, lots that which we really don't care about. Uh, so in the future, there is a working group which tries to standardize the wire protocol for tracing. And it, it introduces two tracing headers, the trace state and trace parent. And the nice thing about this is that actually, imagine you have instrumented or you are using a tracing, uh, for example, Jaeger in your, uh, uh, in your system, but you are calling some managed service using like totally different tracing instrumentations and tracing backends, right? Uh, so like traditionally, these two wouldn't talk to, to each other, but uh, once we have these standard headers, actually these two different tracing uh, deployments can actually correlate the traces. So maybe, like, imagine you have a problem with, like, I don't know, AVS managed service. So you can you can call them and say, "Oh yeah, give me trade data for this trace ID," and they will actually be able to do it. So the last uh, last telemetry data what we get from Istio is logging. And uh, so Mixer sends unified logs to FluentD, and FluentD can be configured to use basically a lot of uh, backend storages for logs. I think by default, something like Elasticsearch. But my question is, is logging actually useful? Like, well, it's uh, probably too expensive, too verbose, and there is no causality, right? And in microservices, we want to correlate the telemetry between the services and between the calls. So maybe it's useful, but maybe for just a couple of events, right? Something like uh, application lifecycle events. So when your application is starting up, it's booting, you would like to log like what is the configuration and uh, some initializations of the components. And I think that instrumentation APIs like we have for logs, metrics, and traces, they will somehow unify. And so we will instrument our application once and get uh, observability for all of those telemetry data what we can generate. So next is demo. And I will show you this, uh, it's like a soccer game deployed on Kubernetes. Uh, it's actually not my work, it's a work uh, by Joel Trakovian, which works in the same team. Um, so I will just, uh, just start deploying the microservices into Kubernetes. So the first service is a, is a UI. So I will just port forward the Istio gateway. And now we should see there is nothing, there is start game. If I hit the button, nothing happens because uh, we have only like the UI service, which is responsible for uh, for refreshing the game and drawing it uh, on the screen. But we don't have actually 
microservice responsible for like Stadium and the players. So next I will deploy the, the ball, Stadium and the players. So we see that something happened. Okay, so we, we have the ball, there are players. And basically there is like very simple UI. They are going after the ball, uh, but it's, it's very simple. Uh, and as you can see there are like two, two teams, the yellow and this uh, like bluish. Uh, and they're just going to the, to the ball and trying to, uh, to, to score, basically. So I will go to Kiali, and let's have a look what Kiali can, can show us. Okay, so as I mentioned, Kiali is like service mesh observability tool for Istio, and it provides you like a uh, high level view on the namespace faces and the applications deployed. So we are working in this default namespace, so I'll just, just go there. We can see all the, all the microservices, so we have AI locals. This is basically uh, the players for local players, and there's visitors, ball, stadium, and UI. Then there is also this graph, which is very interesting. So we can see all the, basically all the components in our deployment. So we can see locals, the visitors, the whole stadium. You can also see like the percentage of the traffic going to, to each individual services. You can actually change this, like there are a lot of this different views you can choose from. So for example, now you can see the AI visitors is just calling ball, stadium, but you can also introduce something like service nodes and we will see that more when we have like different versions of a service that you know, then we can quickly see like how much traffic is going to each individual version. So I'll just zoom in to, to the visitors and here we can see that uh, Visitors are calling the ball, so we're getting position of the ball, calling the stadium. There is this Jaeger collector, so maybe the service is reporting some, uh, some traces to the, to, the, to the Jaeger and UI. So next step, I will, I will deploy a second ball. So we see the ball is here, but uh, sometimes it takes time to to get it to the to the stadium. Okay, so we we have two balls, and we can see that the players they are hesitating; they don't know <laughs> which ball to to take. <laughs> uh, the Kiali, the observability is pretty much the same. We see the well, we see the different balls, right? And I will have to refresh. And we see the traffic is like splitted like 22 by 78. Uh, that's just because the we we we2 was deployed later, so we wait the traffic will be 50 50. Uh, so we don't have a lot of time, so I will just quickly quickly change the the Istio rules to forward 75% of the traffic to one of the balls and 25 to other ball. Okay. So we, if you look at the game, yeah. So now the players should be playing only win bad ball, I think with this, the first one. But sometimes maybe they go to the other one because it's like 25%. So if they are very close and the request goes to the second ball, they will just go there. 
What is more interesting, we will use some like better players. So we have uh, Messi and Mbappé. And they're much better players. So let's see. So we can see now they're using the same like uh, the same strategy. Like 75% they go to to the white ball, and 25% of the times they go to the to the other ball. But what is uh, I haven't changed any code. I'm just changing the configuration in Istio. And what is even more interesting that we can actually enable two games in the in the in the stadium. So the Messi and Mbappe will be playing with the, with uh, the second ball, and the all like dummy players will be playing the, with the first ball. So you can see Messi and Mbappe are playing only with the with the pink, and the other ones are playing with the with the white ball. <laughs> So yeah, if you go to Cali, you, you see like uh, what is happening, like how much traffic is going to, to each of the balls. Uh, you can also uh, go to distributed tracing and see some traces. I think this will work. So what is interesting here, what I have done, that I instrumented the, the AI or the players in a such way that you actually see how they move on the on the stadium, so you can trace like who scored and like uh, where the player was. It's pretty interesting. But if the game like if it lasts long, then you get like an insane number of dispens. So, for example, like one thousand. But also in the UI, this is. Uh, what you can do with tracing, like if something is starting and the start process is complicated, you can instrument it to, to basically see like what, uh, what, was the, what were the steps during the initialization. So you see the UI called stadium, stadium called the ball, and the ball called mixer. Okay, so the other thing, in, uh, so in Kali, we have this, uh, this nice graph we have also access to the metrics. So if I go to services, um, I can go to AI locals and see. I have to go to the, I have to go to the workloads, <coughs> and I will just show you. I think it's a ball. Yeah. So you, get, you have access to all the metrics from the Istio, and you can actually go to, uh, to Grafana. There should be some other link uh, where you can like, get more, more of these graphs. Okay, this is everything. Thank you. Do you have any? Yes.